so very excited to be speaking to Kevin Brighting, who many of you will recognise, especially when you hear his voice, as the narrator of the Stanley Parable, which is an amazing game. A lot of people, uh, big fans of it. Uh, welcome, Kevin. Thank you so much for having a chat with me. My pleasure. My pleasure, Laura. Um, I guess we'll, we'll just start with how did you manage to get involved with the Stanley Parable? I, I know, I believe you had done a, a bit of voice acting for games before that. Um, how, how did you hear about it? How did you how did you get involved with it? Uh, originally, Stanley Parable was um, a student project. Uh, Davy Reed, the uh, original or the originator of the game. Um, I believe, was in his final year at uh, university. And he developed um, the first version of the Stanley Parable, which is what they call a mod. Um, um, and it was very short. It was only about 12 minutes, 12, 14 minutes. Um, but it was effectively the first draft of the Stanley Parable. Um, and... For reasons I don't quite understand why, um, I think Davy's a bit of an Anglophile, but he was uh, he wanted a, a a British voice to do the narrator, although he was obviously American and based, I think, in Austin, Texas. Um, and so he put uh, he put an open audition out on a on a, a, a sort of voice auditioning site. Um, and it was an, it just was an open audition, and I I saw it one day, um, one morning, and I auditioned, and it's as simple as that, really. Um, and didn't hear anything for a long while, and then suddenly, out of the blue, he contacted me and said, "Would you like to do it?" And I said, "Of course," because it was even at that stage, the the audition piece that he put up was the first paragraph of Stanley Parable as we know it, as everybody knows it. You know, this is a story of a man named Stanley, etc., etc. And um, so, yeah, that's how it started. And did um, that intrigue you, that first paragraph? Were you thinking, what on earth is this game? Well, it, it, I, what intrigued me was um, this, this site has an awful lot of um, clients who are um, American churches, uh, they sit because American churches seem to like British voices. Oh, really? um, uh, whatever reason, don't ask me why, but they do. Um, so there was an awful. There used to be a lot of auditions on there from American churches to do things about, well, things religious, uh, from the Bible and readings and stuff like that. And so when I saw the title, the Stanley Parable, I thought, oh, is it another of these, you know, yeah. things of Southern Church? And what I thought. I mean, I've not got an encyclopedic knowledge of the Bible, but I thought, I've never heard of the Stanley Parable. I've heard of lots of other parables, but not the Stanley Parable. And so it sort of slightly intrigued me, and I opened it up. I thought, there's nothing to lose. Just have, let me have a read of it. And the first paragraph is, it was so, it was witty, and it was so good to read it. And I thought, well, this is, this is really unusual, because most of the time the scripts are pretty, pretty awful. And, but this was this was terrific, um, and I thought, oh, I like this. And so, you know, I auditioned, and I didn't think I'd get it, but I did. Um, so I'm very lucky. Um, so as I say, a few months, or a few weeks, or months, it might have been a month or two months down the road, he contacted me. We did it, um, and it was huge fun to do because he's a he's a great writer, Davy, um, and. It, he put it out to, you know, games, gamesters, and they all loved it because it was quirky and weird. Um, and so he got a lot of write-ups, uh, this little student game. And I got a lot of mentions, which was very, very pleasant for me. And then, of course, it all went quiet. And then months and months later, um, really quite a long time later, Davey contacted me again and said... Um, I am thinking of developing this into a full-size game. Would you still be interested in doing it? And I said, well, of course, yes, I'd love to. And so that's, that's how it happened. And uh, we, we then 
worked on it over a quite a long period of time. It was like four years in the making, the original Stanley Parable. Um, so it was a long, long time. Um, and it was made in dribs and drabs. I mean, I was, um, uh, I didn't just go into a studio and do one long monster script. No. It was, <laughs> it was, it was done sometimes little bits of like one or two paragraphs or a few pages. And it was sort of, it was drip fed. And so the, the, the only tricky thing was matching the voice all the time. Um, I always had to start, I had to start ever recording at home with this is a story of a man named Stanley just so I match the voice and get get the rhythm of the get the rhythm of the piece so I was gonna say is that how you get into it because it, that must be quite hard having such a break between well, um, very, recording sessions it's even harder when we did the most recent one yeah. because <laughs> it was a, I, I, I've forgotten how long I think it's nearly again nearly four years uh, wow. between the release of, of Stanley Parable 1 and um, the most recent one. Um, so, you know, that was, that was tricky. I? And of course you go through stages. I mean, I, there's one, there's one bit in the game, which some people eagerly eared people might spot where I do sound slightly different. It's because I was recovering from a cold. Um, you know, it's not surprising that certain things like that, you know, obviously affect your voice and, uh, but I, it's one of it's one of those things. It's what it's what you're paid to do. Um, so, uh, so, but that was the only tricky thing to do. But the rest of it was just plain good fun because it was it was such a, such a crazy game. Um, yeah. Did they have to sort of ex did they try and explain the game much to you, or did they just say? This is the script. Read it. Or how much input did you have on 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 what you said? Was it kind of a collaboration? Well, they wrote the script. Yeah. And I and I and I mean they did sometimes put ad lib for ten seconds or ad lib for twenty seconds or sing a song, which was used to make my toes curl when they said. Um, but no, I had absolute freedom and in terms of performance. They didn't sit in on the performance. That's what what you hear is what. I decided the performance should be, uh, and they were remarkable in this, how hands off they were about that. Um, they just, but they they kind of liked it because they said they used to sit there and wait for the recording to arrive, and then they said we'd sit around laughing at what you'd done, <laughs> and they they would tweak certain things in the game because of what I you know uh, because of the mood I. I'd injected into a particular scene, but no, they didn't really. I mean, there were there were basic kind of directions on the script. Sometimes, you know, getting getting angry or getting annoyed yeah. or peevish, but nothing more than that. It was very very broad stroke stuff, and so I was given an awful, I mean, a terrific amount of freedom. You know, because normally you you have producers and directors, you know down your throat saying, oh, no, you word wrong or that emphasis was wrong. No, there was, no, there was none of that. And I think that's partly why it's worked, because because it was recorded in, as I say, it was recorded, sorry, that's it's a, new, it's a new kitten creation habit. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, there were, uh, oh, oh, God, I was going to say, yes, there were, there were great chunks I could just do as uh, as one take, and there, then so then you get a flow of 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 a script that you wouldn't get normally when people wanted you to direct, you know want you to do it line by line. I mean that lo you lose all the spontaneity when that sort of thing happens. Whereas this, but, and because of the nature of the script as well, because it was just me. I mean, I, you know, I'm not interacting with anybody else apart from maybe the player. But that's this, but that in a sense is this imaginary person in my head. Yes. Right. Was that was that quite difficult in in terms of as you say it was just you recording the lines you didn't really have anyone to to bounce off with or was was that easier? <laughs> it was remarkably easy. May I'm a bit dark, but uh, it was it, it, it's like an imaginary friend uh, you're talking to and telling off or encouraging. Uh, no, that was that was that was really rather easy. Um, 
and because the, the character of the narrator is, is he's so contrary, he goes from encouraging to nasty and, and peevish, and all those. He has the whole range of emotions, um, and he's fairly uncontrollable. Um, so it, it's just good fun. It's good fun to do. And I've never done anything like that before. It's, by a mile, it's the most enjoyable piece of work I've ever done. I, I can imagine. It, I mean, you can tell that you're enjoying it when you're playing the game. It, you, you, and I think that's what m really makes the game as well, obviously. Um, yeah. Did you draw on any sort of inspirations to, to create this character of the narrator, or, or did it just come naturally? No, yeah, there is... Uh, well, I, I've, I've told other people this, but... Um, when I saw the original script the very first time around, uh, what came into my head was Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I don't know if you know that. Yes, yes, yeah. And most people will probably know the film, which has Stephen Fry doing the narrator. Now, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't going using that as a reference. I was going back to the original BBC radio broadcast. Okay, yeah wonderful actor called Peter Jones, who sadly, of course, is no longer with us. It's a long time ago. And he played the voice of the book in that, in the original production, radio production. And he had a slightly peevish tone to his voice, which was uh, as if he didn't really want to be there. Um, and I thought, that's... I could hear his voice saying those words, those Stanley Parable words. Now, I can't impersonate Peter Jones, but what I did, I, I tried to, bless him, I tried to do it in the style of um, Peter Jones. Um, and uh, I, I don't know, I, I, I don't know if that was successful, but what it did is it, it, didn't, it gave me something to, to, to latch onto in terms of creating a character. And of course, um, because most people have not seen or played the, the student version of the game, that's, that's ever so slightly different, I think, uh, than the, the version you get in the Stanley Parable. Oh, okay. In what, in what way? Well, it's, it's the, the characters developed and got a, a little bit more subtle, you know. Okay. It, it, was, it was painted... Obviously, the other thing was painted in broad strokes, really, because it was just a small little student piece, as I say, about 14 minutes long. And so we were just sort of, we were all learning on it, really. Yeah. I mean, uh, and these things develop, you know, and, you know, the Davies scripts changed slightly, got funnier and got more perverse and more <laughs> quirky um, as we went along. And I just went with the flow, and it was it was great. We fed off each other, really. I suppose. And when you say it spent you spent four years doing this, I think some people might be surprised that it it, it took that long. What was that? Just because he he was writing new dialogue as he went, and then you were recording it, or how come it took um, four years? Well, yeah, basically, yeah, because um, they do a um, because. David did the first, obviously, when he did the student one, all by himself. Yeah. And um, his own confession, he was, I mean, he, he struggled with the programming, you know, the actual computer programming side of it. Um, I think it was written in Unity or something. I don't know. I'm, not, I'm no expert on it. And anyway, uh, William, uh, William Pugh, who is a, a genius guy from Hull, um, and who was very young at the time, uh, about 16, got in touch with him and said, I'd like to, I'd like to program this with you. And uh, <laughs> remarkably, Davy, who didn't know him from Adam, said, oh, all right then. Um, and William came in and was, I mean, a, a, I mean, just a Billy wizard programming. And so it, it, that all changed, that changed everything. So yeah. New, the new Stanley Parable looked good, but it was also much more complicated and, uh, in terms of programming. And I suppose um, that slowed things down. So, so, so William was, you know, uh, uh, 
let me reiterate, when he was age 16, wow. was programming uh, was that programming Stanley Parable. Davy was writing it. Uh, they were reacting to way, the way I had read the words. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's what you call a, a very indie way of approaching a, a game, you know. And so, and it was the quirky thing about it is that when we when we met up when we, when the game was nominated for awards for the at the Baftas and we all went we all turned up in London. Um, Davy came over from the States. We met each other for the first time. We'd really? never met. You'd never yeah. met making the entire game. I think William and Davy had met before. Um, but I'd never met them. I'd never seen them. Wow. And, and so I, we talked to each other on the phone. Yeah. yeah. Or on Skype or something. But not, not face to face. No, we'd never met. So that was really strange. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I had to kind of... Oh, I had to try and get them from their avatar picture, although they're, they're kind of like profile pictures. And I thought, is that Davy over there? Because Davy's profile picture was him, and his head is covered in recording tape, so it wasn't very easy. <laughs> but eventually, yes, we found each other. And that's the first time we'd actually met face to face, like shook hands and things. It was very, very odd. <laughs> but that kind of says, says something about about the nature of this game and the way it's not, it wasn't a, it wasn't a conventional at all. I mean, you know, it's not like uh, Grand Theft Auto. I can't imagine them doing it that way. Uh, it'd be very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Call of Duty done as a, as a, you know, with everyone working from their bedroom. Yeah. But, uh, but there they are. But, um, yeah, so that's, that's, I think that's, that's part of its charm and part of why it's quirky and part of why, why people kind of like it um plus the fact that it, it amuses me that people seem to like to be told off <laughs> by my rather sort of victorian character um who's got you know who's got no sense of humor um and yet he's quite funny um but there we are that's you know there we go and it's it's one of those it's just one of those nice serendipitous things that happened that we all, you know, I was in the right place at the right time. And um, we all got, we all clicked, even though we weren't, you know, as I say, we hadn't physically seen each other. We all clicked uh, creatively. So that was fabulous. Did you expect the game to, you know, grab people's attention as much as it did? Or, you know, was it a surprise when, as you say, it started getting nominated for awards, everyone was talking about it? Yeah, of course it's a surprise because you 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 want it, you want things to be a success, but you don't you don't expect it. Um, uh, I was amazed. Um, I didn't even know I'd been nominated, and that was a fellow voiceover friend of mine who uh, emailed me and said, "Congratulations on the BAFTA nomination." And I said, "What BAFTA nomination?" Because they hadn't bothered to write to me at that point. Oh. Um, so the letter arrived about a week later, um, but. Um, yeah, that was obviously it was lovely. But I wasn't. You, you can't expect it. But I do. I do remember. Um, I think the original game was released in October or something, and around about the beginning of February the next year, so a very short period of time, uh, Davy rang me and said, um, "He said, are you sitting down?" And I said, "I'm all sitting down." And he said. We've just sold a million units. Uh, I went, what? Because it was only, I say, well, one, two, two and a half months. Yeah. And a million units on Steam. Um, and we went, wow, that's extraordinary. Um, and you've got people from almost all over the world. I mean, I, I, I've had this conversation with them recently because. Obviously, now I'm in the Far East, and people in the Far East don't seem to know about it. Uh, and I'm saying to them, please, let's get it into China and, and into Japan, because they'll go, they'll go bonkers for it. Um, but it's, you know, that, but they've got so much work to do. I mean, I, it's all those sort of silly things, because the original game was, built, was written for PC, I think, PC only. And 
Then uh, William worked really hard and brought out a Mac version. Um, and what's, what's really different about the Ultra Deluxe version, I like Stanley, that Parable version too, is that it, this is all available on all, virtually every console known to man. Yeah. And so, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a massive new potential audience for it. Um, and I don't know, but I, I can't believe that wasn't an enormous amount of work for him to do. Um, but of course, all the, uh, if you put it into other languages, and I, I, think, I don't know how many languages it's in at the moment. Um, I, um, one of the questions that most people ask, and I, I, I'm very pleased you haven't, is have you played the Stanley Parable? To which the answer is no. Um, and people then say, why? And I say, because I've already, I already know all the endings. Yes. Um, uh, so it's pretty point. Um, but in that sense, I've never actually like, kind of looked in, into the, the settings and said, oh, you know, can I choose Russian or can I choose you know, French, German, whatever? I don't know if, if those language, if it's in those languages. Well, of course, if it is, that's an enormous amount of work in terms of translation, and then. I'm guessing they would still keep your voice though, and just have it in oh. subtitles, wouldn't they? Yeah, I think they'd just be subtitles. Yeah, because yeah. they can't change you. <laughs> I'd be very interested to hear if they did do that. Would have a Russian Kevin Brighting or <laughs> as the narrator? I don't. I don't think it would work really. For me, sometimes. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, who knows? Um, uh, how did it feel going back to it all then? Did it did it take much convincing? Because I believe you, you did record a, a lot of it. I mean, I've played the Ultra Deluxe version and there's a lot of extra stuff. So w what did it feel having to, to go back and, and sort of um, get used to that voice again? Well, again, it's a, like I said earlier, it's, it was the, the worst thing was actually just I thought, oh, I'm out. You know, has my voice changed in four years? And... Uh, so I just had to go back and, and try a bit, and, and 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 yet again record the infamous line. This is a story of a man named Stan, just to match up and see see if it did match up, and it did. I was quite surprised, really. Um, and so that, it, that that really wasn't a problem. Um, I was a bit surprised. I mean, because of the enormous success of the original Stanley Parable, um, Davy was a bit overwhelmed. I think. Uh, and he did another game uh, uh, afterwards um, and then sort of backed away from games entirely, um, was doing other things. I think because he was a bit overwhelmed and it was, he was sort of swamped with people um, uh, wanting to talk to him and, you know, asking him about, about Stanley Parable. And, Sort of strange things happened with the original Stanley Parable. Um, uh, uh, there's one. Oh, I'm trying to think. What's the name of that political drama that uh, has got disgraced? Had the disgrace Kevin Spacey in it? Oh, House uh, of Cards. House of Cards. Um, they were contacted. We were contacted by House of Cards and said um, we want Kevin Spacey as the president in that, uh, to be playing Stanley Parable. Is that okay? Can we have your permission? And of course, Davy said yes. <clears throat> and he thought, this is bizarre. I'm actually in a scene with Kevin Spacey. <laughs> on <laughs> and, and, and you think, what? This, is, this is very, very odd. Um, and I got, uh, I got a call out of the blue one day. I was having lunch with a friend in a restaurant on a Friday lunchtime and the phone, my mobile rang and it said, is that Kevin Brighting? And I said, yes. And they said, oh, this is, this, this is Doctor Who, the offices of Doctor Who. Are you free on Monday for some, for, for some voice work? And I thought this was a wind up, um, like you would. Um, and I said, oh, come on, I don't know who this is. I thought it was one of my fellow voiceover friends. And I, and I hung up. And um, the phone rang again in about two minutes and said, this really is the offices of Doctor Who. <laughs> and blood ran cold. And they said, are you here on Monday for a voiceover? And I said, yes, of course. And so 
I trotted down to Cardiff where they, they were doing it all. And of course, I, I, saw, I met the director for the very first time. And I, I said, I've got to ask you this question. I said, you don't know me from Adam. Why, why, why have you contacted me? And he said, well, I was walking past my son's bedroom the other day. And he said, we've got this character, we've got this voiceover character in this episode. And he said, I heard your voice. And I thought, that's just perfect for this character. Wow. And he said to his son, what is that? What, what, are you, what are you playing? And he said, oh, it's a stand, something called the Stanley Parable. And, of course, he got his, his operatives to track me down, which is not very hard. And that's, that's how I got the call. So, it, you know, very strange things happen if, if you do it. <laughs> if you do, if you do a popular, uh, you know, game. But it was like his fourteen-year-old son. Well, I remember saying to the director, well, "I think I owe your son a beer." And he said, "You do not." He said, "He's only fourteen years old." Uh, and I said, "Okay." Uh, but it was, yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it was. Strange things happen. Very strange things happen. So from House of Cards to Doctor Who. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> I mean, you must also get... Do you go out sometimes when people recognise you for your voice? No, not really. No? No. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I, 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 if they do, they've not stopped me. Okay. That, that's, the beauty of, that's the beauty of not being in vision. Yes. The, um, uh, that's, the, that's actually the beauty of being a voice actor as opposed to an actor. Uh, you don't have all that baggage to deal with if people recognize you. Um, so, um, yeah. Nah, I don't, I don't think anyone has recognized my voice. No. Sometimes, I, I, sometimes people, I've had people contact me since, because yeah. I've, obviously you, I've done lots of other stuff in the past, and yeah. it's got nothing to do with computer games. I've done you know, a lot of training programs, medical videos, and stuff like that. And I've had people contact me and said, oh, are you the same person that told me how to do a you know quadruple bypass operation in a video I saw on da da da? And I go, well, yeah, it probably was. <laughs> <laughs> but he, uh, and that's quite intriguing that people contact you. Know, you know, you taught me about double entry bookkeeping. Bookkeeping is it really you, the narrator, doing? It? Go, yeah, actually, it is. So, <laughs> so that, there you go. That's the end of kind of recognition, recognition I guess. Yeah. Oh, well, that's, that's something at least. <laughs> um, do you have a favourite favorite line in the game? Is there a particular, I mean, there's so many that you have to say, but I don't know if there's one that you particularly enjoyed uh, having to record. It's not a favourite line, and I have, I, it's not a favourite ending. Um, my, but I've got a favourite sequence, which is the most contentious, um, the most contentious sequence, and I think it actually had to be changed in the end because um, people in the US I think kicked off about it um, and that's it. there was a a little section called choice it was a little a kind of a film within the program and it used a, a, like an American 50s style voice yes uh, I think I know it yeah, yeah and it was, it was a series of black and white pictures of line drawings and they were very naughty. They were, I mean, they were, you know, people offering small children cigarettes in Africa. Um, and then in the next shot, the, the small child was engulfed in flames. I mean, it, it sounds awful. I know. <laughs> they were actually very funny um, in a very black way. Um, and that was absolutely my favorite sequence because nobody realized it was me doing the voice for a start, which was good fun. Um, David said, did you get to do that voice? We've got to give him a credit. I said, he's called Kev Brighton. And he went, oh, God, really? He said, I didn't. <laughs> and um, so that was fun. Uh, and uh, I think joyously it still survives on YouTube unless someone has complained about it. Um, but that was one. Actually, there were lots of things. I'm not sure. There were, David was wonderful at doing promotional stuff. Uh, in the run-up to the release of the original program. And we did lots and lots of stuff, including um, uh, responses to people who'd written in um, about the, ori the original game he'd done. And there was um, 
I'm trying to think of his name now. Um, so, oh my God. What's his name? There was a bloke who wrote in. And given that the game was free, um, the, you know, the, the David's student version, um, his name was, was something punchy like Gaston or, or Tarquin or something. <laughs> um, he wrote a complaint and said, oh, it could have been, I liked it, but it could have been much better than this and da 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 da. And David got in contact with him and said, Can, do you mind if we use your quotes? And the bloke stupidly said, no, I don't mind. And, um, so we did a whole little um, video, which was me as the narrator and me doing a completely stupid voice for this bloke, which I did in a Birmingham accent to make him sound like a, you know, a, a, um, a bit of an idiot. <laughs> um, and and you, know, you thought, well, this is extraordinary. He, we, you know, he allowed this to happen. Davey also did a wonderful little, uh, again, in the American style voice about the history of the, the history of video games, which was done like a Soviet a Soviet movie, um, and I'm, I'm sure these things do exist on YouTube, but they were they were extremely good fun to do because you just thought because when you get a script that makes you laugh out loud yourself, that's a great start, you know. Yeah. You think it makes me laugh. I just hope I can, can pass that on to anyone else who, who sees it. And it would, I would have had to be a real, I think, a really rotten performer if if you didn't, if you saw saw it and didn't laugh because his, it's like everything. I mean, the script is everything, and the script was so so good. Um, it was, you know, it was easy to bring them to life. So. Have you, have you got any plans to to work with them again, or, or is this kind of the, the final project with them, do you think? Oh, it be dead by the time if we want to do another one. It's been four years' time. Um, uh, no, I don't think so. I don't, I don't really, I mean, I'm really surprised we did a Stanley Parable 2, to be honest. Um, I don't know. If, I don't really know if um, Davey and William would want to do another one. Um, because where do you go with it? I mean, it's. Uh, I mean, I. There are even a different project. Do you think he would ever work on something else? No, but I'm so associated now with with the narrator. Yeah. Brings. I, I mean, I couldn't use that voice in another game. I don't think because that would not be fair, and people would go, "Oh, it's it's not as good as Stanley Parable or whatever." And I, it, it would force me to. Work hard and think of another character. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I can be bothered. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I, I, I mean, I'd love to work with him because, I, I mean, he, he is, they, are, they are both so talented, but brother, you know, they'd probably sit together with him. So, I mean, they might, they might want to move away. I mean, it's very hard. If you, I, I mean, if you think about it, when you have a, your, your very, very first project, is a sort of worldwide success. It's, I mean, that's that's a, you know, it's, then you've got to do the. It's almost like in the music terms, you've got to do the infamous second album, which was nearly always a failure. Um, so it's it's hard. It's hard for. I think they were very concerned about um, keeping it entertaining and fresh, um, because. Uh, it's it's tough, and that's why we've got all these new ridiculous things with the bucket and the yeah. hole we fall into, which I think is very funny, and the jumping forward in time. Um, uh, but yeah, I, but there's no there's no equivalent of like the baby game uh, that was in the first, the first version, um, which I was always amazed that people actually played that for whatever it was. Was it four hours? Or four hours? Or four? I know some people automated it so they could go to bed. Um, <laughs> it kept, kept, the program kept doing the key press just oh, in time. Wow! Okay. <laughs> but that's dedication, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, but there you are. But within days of the new game coming out, I had people writing to me, emailing me, saying, "If I send you a plastic bucket, will you sign it?" And I went, "No," because 
Um, it'll open the floodgates. Oh, yeah. God, yeah. I'd, I'd be sitting here in a post office in the Philippines <laughs> with you know, 500 plastic buckets to post. I thought, no, I've got something to do with my life. Yeah, you know? definitely. But, uh, there you go. Um, I'm, I'm going to ask you, and you're very welcome to say no, because I'm sure it can take a bit to get into character. I was going to ask you if you would be up for just saying a line for the Stanley parable, but uh, with my name instead of Chris, instead of Stanley. But equally, I understand if that's a little bit hard to get into character for, but um, I, I thought I'd throw it out there anyway, if, if you were up for it. What do you want to say? This is the story. This is a podcast from a girl called Laura. Well, uh, my stream name is Cressup, so if you could do that and say stream, or even just say, what's the matter, Cressup, something, if you have no, do you have no idea where you're going, whatever right. is easiest to say, really, but yeah. This is a stream from a lady called Cressup. Stupid name. <laughs> Amazing. So, you see, I, so I just find it, you, you could just get into that so well it, it's, it's fantastic um thank you so much i, I really appreciate you, you taking the time to have a chat with me I, I suppose i should ask as well what else have you been doing aside from stanley parable because you, you must get everyone just talks about the stanley parable to you but you, you're doing so many other things as well as that yeah but not games no it's true yeah. well I'm, I'm just doing my own normal boring yeah, educational videos and stuff like that and commercials, yeah, but not games. Yeah. Um, because everybody, everybody wants you to do a version of Stanley. Well, they want the Stanley Parable character. Yeah. You know? And they, and I can't, I can't begin to tell you how many people sent me scripts, um, which actually started with the line, "This is the story of a man named, you know, uh. Andrew, or something like that." Ridiculous. Uh. Yeah. They plagiarised it completely, oh, you know. No. And you just say, "No, go away, go and do something original." Yeah. Um, but, um, so no, I, I, as I said, I'm not into. I mean, as an actor, I'm not into doing grunts and screams and roars and all the, all the things that most voice actors, poor voice actors, have to do in most computer games, which are you know shoot 'em ups. Um, that's what set. Stanley apart really because it was it was a story it was I'm just a storyteller so you know and there are not many of those around if one came up if, and it was good I'd have obviously I'd have, I'd have a go but you know, I'm quite content to uh, hang my hat on Stanley. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's an amazing piece of work and it's an, an amazing character that you, you've brought to life um, that we don't even get to see. We never get to see <laughs> the, the narrator. But um, I think that's what makes it so strong, really, that you it, it's just your voice that leads it. But that somehow makes it all the better, I think. Cool. <laughs> uh, Brilliant. Well, thank you again. Thank you so much, Kevin. I uh, appreciate your time. And um, yeah, well, I'll, I'll I'll still listen out to see if, if in the future I hear you in either, I don't know, another episode of Doctor Who or something else. I'll be listening out in case you're there somewhere. All right, Laura. <laughs> thank you so much.